Peace, love, shalom, family. I want to talk to you as fast as I possibly can because I have to go. But I, I feel led to share this with you, so I'm going to do just that. Um, so let's talk about these two spirits that I see that is a problem within the church. It's a problem within relationships. And when I say relationship, I'm not just talking about, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, fiance to fiance or um, husband and wife. I'm talking about relationships as a whole, like father, son, mother, daughter, sister, brother, cousin, cousin, um, grandparents, grandchildren, like this spirit, these two spirits, it's more. But these two, I want to talk about and specify right now through the power of God and through his infinite wisdom and understanding and excellent greatness. I want to talk about what he wants to talk about. So, Lord, I pray that you take over this temple, Lord God, right now. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, amen. So, let's talk about the spirit of miscommunication. This spirit of miscommunication is mangling the church, mangling households, mangling groups. I mean, it is like tearing everybody to shreds, specifically because we refuse to listen. And I honestly believe that we don't, that we're not attentive enough, you know, in the body of Christ. We're not attentive enough to each other. You know, we're a lot, we're a lot of us are self-centered, you know, and we don't want to hear out what the other person is trying to say or communicate. Another aspect I believe is because we don't forgive each other like we should, you know, we're not forgiving one another like we should. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more for the enemy to work with. This is why God tells us to put away the old and put on the new and to forgive each other and to love each other. Because when you do these things and when you follow God's commandments, it's a lot harder for the enemy to really get a hold to you. He can attack you, but it's a lot harder for him to destroy you when you're in the will of God. But I want to talk about this spirit of miscommunication. And I know that my sisters wouldn't mind me sharing this. So, Last Saturday, as we were sitting down at lunch, we were talking and we were just reminiscing on some old things. And somehow it just came up of some old wounds or some old mishaps that we had in the past. And I was watching my two sisters begin to speak to each other. Now, as they're speaking to each other in the spirit realm, I can literally see. I didn't see a face. I didn't see a body. I just felt like a masculine, nasty energy manifest between those two. And as one was talking to the other, the other thought that this one was saying that one. And as and then the other one respond, the other one got a miscommunication of what the other one was saying. But when they were talking, I can actually see this force leaning back and forth, feeding each other. And I'm not lying. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I'm telling you. And I saw this particular energy talking back and forth to these two and lying what a spirit of miscommunication is, is simply a liar. It twists, it turns, it perverts what one's true meaning is. That's what a spirit of miscommunication is. So I saw this spirit actually feeding each other. So the, 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 the spirit of Solomon, the spirit of wisdom just fell upon me at that time. And I began to speak to him. And I was trying to, and I literally, God was showing me what each one was trying to say. So as I interpreted what one was trying to say to the other and the other one, vice versa, they was like, wait a minute, you're like, that really is what I was trying to say. Wow. So immediately God used me to identify that spirit, put it in its place and disintegrate it. How? Unity. Putting the word of God in it. When two people are standing together on God's word. In his commandments, you're like Velcro. Nothing can come up out of the floor and stand in between you. But a lot of us are against each other rather than standing together. So when you're standing face to face, there's space, there's room for something to come up out of the floor. To stand in between you two and, 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 and to cause mishaps and to call problem, cause problems. And in, 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 in the African culture, what they would call that in a demonic sense, a spirit husband or a spirit wife. But I'm not going to go into all that right now. I'll talk about that another time. But that spirit, you give it space to manifest itself between you two. And by you having anger for each other unforgiveness toward each other 
that spirit can work with that because he's already observed you. He's already watched you. He's, he, he knows what push, pushes your buttons or what pricks you. So he uses those things. He uses your hurts. This is where we're going into the spirit of offense. But let's finish with that spirit of miscommunication. If you look in the Bible, every false doctrine that was started, even in ancient history, if you do your studies, all of them were based from demonic miscommunication. That is where they start. The devil miscommunicates what God is saying to you to get you to believe something that is false. That is a lying spirit, which manifests himself as a spirit of miscommunication. That's what it is. These religions you get is miscommunication. When things happen in your life, it's for a reason. But it miscommunicates and you get another idea. Same thing with Job. The reason Job was going through what he was going through, his friends was miscommunicating what God was doing. The first thing they thought is, hey, you, hey, bro, you did something. That's why you're going through what you're going through is because you did something. You did something to cause the wrath of God to kindle against thee. Job's perspective slowly began to change. At first it was, you know, God's still good and I worship him. He's on the throne. And then slowly but surely, as that spirit of miscommunication got in, Job's perspective began to change. And God had to come behind him and said, who is this that darkness counseled by word without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man and I will demand of thee and ye answer me. And then God began to talk to him and to communicate with him what the deal is and who he is and begin to change the perspective of Job's thinking. That's why Job said, oh, my God, I lay my hand upon my mouth. I'm sorry. That's why God began to change the perspective of what was going on. I'm sorry I had to pause this. Someone was about to do a talking. But God began to come and set the record straight and to properly communicate with Job what was going on. And even though Job never did get a full understanding as to what was going on or what the, 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 or the conversation between God and Lucifer, the, the proper communication is, Job, I still love you. The devil likes to miscommunicate things in your life that happens to make you hate God so that you'll stand against him. But when you got two people that are together or whoever it is, like I said, father, son, mother, daughter, spouse, if you stand apart, and you stand and look at each other as an accuser, an enemy, or a Satan, that is what causes that spirit of miscommunication to get in and to defile your, your whole relationship and to defile your whole meaning and purpose. And that's all the devil wants to do. He can care less about you. He wants you dead because you being together has a purpose. God loves family and he loves for family to stand together. He hates confusion. He does not like confusion, pride, and all that other stuff. So miscommunication has its place even in a lot of the stories in the word of God. Even with Adam and Eve, God specifically gave them instructions and he communicated these instructions. And that miscommunication was through the serpent. Like, wait, did God really say that? What God really is hiding from you is that what? Spirit of miscommunication caused them to sin. Cause them to change their perspective on each other, change their perspective on their relationship with God. One says one thing, they may not even mean that, and then you take it another way, which brings in the spirit of offense, which is a huge problem. That I want to do a series on that, but I want to just try to shorten it as much as I can. The spirit of offense is a little different, but kind of the same. So it kind of is like hand in hand with the spirit of miscommunication. So when you speak and the devil miscommunicates what God is saying or miscommunicate what that person is saying, now it hits with the spirit of offense. That spirit of offense attaches to you based on aspects, damages, wounds, and hurts from the past. Whenever you are offended, it's usually something that based from your past and not the future. Not sometimes not even the present, because if somebody says something to you that reminds you of something and they don't know anything about you, that's a spirit of offense. You can't grow that way. You will never grow that way because somebody could be coming to you to correct you, help you grow you and everything you're offended by, which also connects with the spirit of pride. 
So now you got three friends. When an evil spirit is driven out of a man, he goes to the desert to dart to dry places seeking rest. He draws up seven other worse than the first, and they come and get you. So you you have to be very careful. When the devil or that spirit of miscommunication or that spirit of offense plants these bad seeds within you, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to diminish it. And by that is forgiveness, thinking on things that are loving, kind, things that you know that God has told us to do. The obedience of God, your obedience to God makes it very difficult for the devil to really bother you. He can fight you, but he can't destroy you when you're in God's will. As long as you're standing together, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. It says together, not in front of each other. And when you're both looking straight ahead at Christ and God is the foundation and he's the center of your life, it is very difficult for the enemy to work with that. But the moment you stand in face to face, that demon comes out the floor and then you wind up miscommunicating. The demon just runs the whole relationship. The spirit of offense, we don't have time for that in these days. We don't. The earth is getting slammed. I mean slammed. And... Things are happening, and God is choosing us to make a difference in this dying, cruel world called Earth. The world is not the problem, it's the people in it. And I just don't want to be on God's bad side when he comes to judge. When he asks you, what did you do to make a difference? When I called you to this position, when I called you to that position, what did you do to make a difference? Well, I didn't want to work with him because he hurt my feelings and I did What? What? Away from me, you work of iniquity. God calls us to unite. And we can't lose focus on the mission. A lot of us are losing focus on the mission. Peter was standing on the water. God told he was coming toward him and God was telling him, just pay attention to me. Don't look down. When you look down, that's how you start to sink. Don't look down. God is the foundation. You don't have to be worrying about what's going on. If he's your foundation, you got to worry about all that. He's, he's holding you. Just look forward. Look straight. Look up. God has our back. But it grieves my spirit because a lot of people will never get over that if they don't yield. You have to yield. You got to forgive. You got to let God heal your wounds. If you have a spirit of offense, how are you going to be able to examine what's wrong with you? How are we going to allow the Holy Spirit to put you in the mirror and point things out if you're always offended? You get offended over every single thing and can't nobody reach out to you or help you because you're allowing that spirit to, to, to just hover you. I did it. I did not grow until I let it go. You got to let it go to grow. God loves us. He wants us as a family to unite, to stay tight, to stay strong, to fight the enemy. We got to look at who the real enemy is. It's not the person. It's the devil. That's why God don't. He never tells you to kill nobody or hurt nobody or come at nobody. He tells you to forgive them because it's not them. So yes, I get it. Sometimes the person works along with that spirit due to its own will, but it's still not the person. Pray for the person that they may see the truth for things that what it for what it really is. Pray for each other. Pray together. The family that prays together stays together. We all know that slogan. You know, it, it, we, 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 we got to be mindful of the spirit of miscommunication before it wipes out. Before it makes marriage a, an extent. Go extent. Uh, it, it's just, I don't know. So the spirit of miscommunication and spirit of offense, they work hand in hand. And they are working overtime so you know keep that spirit out of your relationship forgive each other love each other keep god's commandments first that's how you get it out when you don't leave space for hate and anger and rage and pride and all that stuff when god tells you the, the, the devil that spirit of miscommunication will plant demonic seeds and what a man think if so is he it plants it in your soul and in, 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 in your mind and it manifests itself and when it manifests itself there comes trouble. 
So you got to you gotta think on things. God tells us what to think on. Think on things of the kind, the loving, this. That. God tells you that because what a man think, if so is he. If, if somebody's offended you and you mean you know it wasn't, come on, man. You can talk to the person or just pray. Like, Lord, forgive them for what they've done and move on. Come on, we're not five. So, you know, and, and, and that's why I'm glad me and my sisters have that issue so that we can talk about it. Because I was a victim to that. And even sometimes now the, the enemy still tries to sneak in with that. And when I see it, I don't even talk to the person half the time. I'm not saying that. That's just me. I don't. You got to keep sitting out having 10,000 meetings. If, if if they're not seeing it and they're, they're not seeing what's bothering me or what, I pray and God will handle it. He will. He can take care of it a lot better than you can. So if I, I'm probably going to look over this video, I probably forgot to say a couple of things, but there is a lot more to the spirit of offense. But like I said, I want to like take my time and do a series on that because that spirit of offense is serious. And it can block you from heaven. It can literally block you from your place called there. It can block you. Peace, love, shalom. I love you all. Remember, to get rid of the spirit of miscommunication, you got to stand together on the word of God. That's how you get rid of it. You forgive each other and love each other. That's how you get over it. But the more you stand against each other, Face to face, that spirit comes out the floor and it's going to work in between you. Stand together, not facing each other. What God has joined together, let no man put us under. He didn't say what God joins face to face. Where did he take Adam's wife out of? The side, not the front, the side. It's together.